days, everything is bio. So you have fruit that is bio, eggs that are bio, meat that is bio. Is it possible to make ourselves also a mountain bike that is bio made with bamboo sticks? But the best part is to stitch together all the parts with natural fibers, so cotton and pieces of walnut and things like this, and to glue the parts together, also the glue will be made with bio. I'm talking about soy resin. It's crazy, but it can hold up my weight. So let's get started, but first, intro. And finally, my package has arrived. I just bought from this website all the bamboo sticks I'm going to use to, to make the frame. Consider that I weigh more than 240 pounds, so I choose specific bamboo to this project. This is a very strong bamboo. I choose three pieces so I can make three different, different type of frames in a future project. And these are the dimensions of all the parts. You can see here the names of the species of the bamboo can choose any one of these three brand of bamboo and you are pretty sure it will hold up without problems. We absolutely need to install little parts that are made with metal. So this is the holder of the tire on the back. Also the pedals are necessary because we basically need parts that are mechanically strong and are made in metal. So basically these are the only components we are going to install. So this is the tube that will hold the seat in place. I keep it because this metal part is very useful because I can place a nut and tighten the seat itself. Now I have to hide and fit all this pipe inside some bamboo. So I bought one that has almost the same dimension as you can see. And this one will go perfectly inside the hole right here. Later we will see how to hide it and glue it and make things much stronger. So this will be the, the middle part of the frame. We can place it right here on the table. And now let's focus instead on the front part of the, the, the frame itself. For this purpose, I bought some much thicker bamboo. I'm talking about this thicker bamboo. You can see also this side is very, very thick. This is important because I'm a very heavy man. So this will hold my weight without problems. So this I'm pretty sure can handle the weight without problems. Now it's just a matter of and understanding the dimension we need to cut all the bamboo. For this reason I use Caniverse, an app that let me take all measurements of the original bike. So I take these measurements and I cut all the parts using a meter and a marker and mark the points. And I really suggest you to cut an excess of four centimeters on each side because we need to round them out. So consider this excess, it's very important. Some cuts are straight, some are an angle of 30 degrees, but overall it's a very simple job. You just have to replicate the original frame of the bike with this amount earlier. Now it's just a matter of inserting all the metal components inside the bamboo sticks. You can see it fits perfectly inside, but I really love the fact that it takes the round shape of it. So I can take this, this is a very small meal, and cut away the slot following the line that I draw with the marker, which is the perfect line that fits with the metal steering part of the bike. And I also have to install the seat. So this is the seat bamboo. And also this goes here in the front and you can see that he's all rounded up and fits perfectly. This is not for an aesthetical reason, but also for a structural problem. And you can see that here on the right, I need to make everything round because I have to also insert the pedal mechanism. So the pedal mechanism is this, is in steel and goes perfectly right here. I made such a precise job today. I don't even think that it is my job. Usually I make things that looks ugly but right now everything is staying perfectly at in place and to do this I have to glue the parts with some resin and resin doesn't stick to the bamboo out surface so I can use a sharp blade to remove the first layer of bamboo here the glue will stick much better and repli repeat this process to all the parts of the bamboo bike I just received this huge package and inside of it there are all the chemical components I'm going to use. Chemical is not the right word because I train to use only natural fibers and natural resin. So this is natural fiber and I have pigments and other kind of stuff I will show you later in this video. But let's take this, the first component. This is a 
Foam. This is polyurethanic foam, a very different one because it gets so hard like a stone. This is polyurethanic foam. It's very similar to the one you spray around windows and doors in your house, but this is much different. It gets much harder. It has a, a rate of 90, which is very, very hard. I never tried it before, so it's a good idea to make a small test and see how much it expands and how much time do I have to work on it. So let's test it over here. Tests are very important once we try a new product because I don't really know how much time I have and how fast the reaction will occur. Now, it's a very clever idea to add these that are nuts, crushed nuts, to the foam because they are much cheaper and let me use less foam for this project. I can mix component A and component B in the equal ratio and mix carefully everything together with the crushed nuts and I have now, after one minute that I stir everything, only two minutes to work on it. You can see that reaction happens pretty fast and dries and gets hard in only two minutes. It's a very clever idea to wait one and a half minute until the reaction is starting. Apply then the foam into the parts inside the bamboo. In this case, the expanding process of the foam is so handy because we close the gaps around the bamboo and glue all the parts together because this foam sticks very well to wood and to metal as well. The foam we just use is very similar to the one you use around the doors and the windows to seal the gaps. This, I will use it to, for two reasons. The first one is to give much more structure because I will pour the foam inside the bamboo. This will expand and stick to the bamboo and will, will create much more structure inside, from the inside. This gets much harder. It's just like a rock. It's not foam anymore. It's very, very hard. And this as well, let me glue all the parts together, even if they are in a very strange position and the parts aren't cut very precisely, the foam will expand and fill the gaps and glue all the parts together. So now, now that all the parts of the frame are glued, now I can handle the frame without problems. I can clean up using a very sharp blade all the mess we made with the foam. Lucky for us, it's very hard and easy to remove. Now let, let's think about the back tire. I cut four pieces of bamboo that is much thinner but stronger and I can align everything on my workspace. I really suggest you to build yourself a little jig so that you can make sure that the wheel is perfectly aligned with the frame and that everything is sturdy and doesn't move. Let's add some more foam and now it's time to add a cotton string. This is important because we have to have a frame that doesn't deform. Everything has to be much stronger once we continue with the project itself. Inside the box of before, now we can take the epoxy resin. This is pure epoxy and you already know how it works. We need to mix the two components together and a chemical reaction will start. Let's add as well this walnut that are, that are crushed and some cotton. I can use a scale to make sure that we have a perfect mixture of the two components and after we mix the resin together, we can then think about how to make ourselves something like cement that we can apply to the bike frame. We can take this that is crushed, crushed walnut nuts and we can mix it with the resin itself. We can steer it very carefully and we are basically creating ourselves some concrete. We can apply it and glue it on the frame itself. After 12 24 hours, it will get so hard. It's important to have the perfect composition, have to be quite thick. So I can add as well some cotton that will absorb the residue of resin and we are creating the perfect mixture. You can understand when it's ready, when you try to pour it out of your spoon and doesn't fall off very easy. So this is the perfect mixture. I can apply it on all the junction of the frame and push it carefully inside the frame as well. This will get so hard like a rock. I would say harder than a rock. I'm pretty sure I cannot even break it using a hammer. I let everything dry for about 24 hours so that the reaction of the epoxy happens and now the bike frame is so sturdy right now. This has a perfect function of a structural function that we hold the frame itself. 
but it's very important as well to add some fibers that will hold the frame so everybody is using this that is glass fiber but this is going against our project we are going to make a natural bike so let's start with natural resin i was telling you about soy resin this is this is a new product it's made with only natural things so everything is bio no chemicals and it's great we also need some natural fibers i chose two kind of type fibers Basically is the same material they use to make bags for potato and you can see and understand which kind of bag is this So I need to cut strips of both of them one is much thinner and one is much bigger Fibers, but I can mix the two together to have the perfect tissue to stitch the bike frame together so I can use a scale to weight the, the weight of the resin we can take the fabric of before and take some very sharp scissors because now we need to, to prepare ourselves on strips of fabric because later we have to stitch them together around the bike frame I really suggest you right now to prepare yourself different dimensions of these strips some longer one some thinner some bigger one because there are parts of the frame where it's difficult to put our hands so it's important to have different dimensions let's take the soy resin of before this is like epoxy resin but it's made with soy so everything is natural but get so hard once you mix resin it's important to use a scale because we need to mix the perfect ratio four to one ratio of the two components together this soy resin will cure in around about 24 hours so we aren't in a hurry we can take our time to mix properly all the components and as well have all the time we need to apply it on the bike frame so take your time do the things carefully so every time we mix some chemicals like this epoxy soy based resin it's very important to read the instruction and understand if we just need to watch with our eyes the level of the parts and mix them together or instead if we have to use a scale to weight the parts so we have much precise reaction in this case the scale is crucial and i will use it to pour the parts precisely the reaction of the resin will change depending on the temperature of the room the humidity of the room and the the most important is the quantity of the parts we are going to mix together. That's the reason I suggested to work little quantity every time. Let's take a tray and pour inside the resin of before because now we are going to make a mess. That's the reason I'm, I'm wearing my gloves. Let's take the strips of fabric of before because we need to drip them inside the resin. I can use my fingers and pull up the strip and with my free hand squish away all the residue of resin. We basically need a strip that is just wet with resin. No excess is needed, otherwise we make a mess all the way around the bike frame. Now it's time to install it on all the junctions. I, there isn't a real technique to do this, but I took inspiration from boxers when they apply strips around the hands to don't break the bones. So push it and pull it all the way around the metal parts and I can give you a very important suggestion it's something they make also with carbon fiber or glass fiber you have to cross fibers every time you cross fibers the frame gets much stiffer and stronger so that's the reason why I cut also shorter pieces of these fibers and now something that is very important is squish very carefully everything you can use a vacuum bag or you can use this that is a plastic tape pull it and strongly around everything this will remove air bubbles and squish precisely everything so we have to do this procedure everywhere on the bike frame also on the back side you can see that here I'm using very smaller fiber of the fabric this is get this is getting much harder because this is a place where we have all my weight on top so it has to be a very very sturdy part of the bike frame so apply the tape all the way around Wow, and the bike frame is ready and it's so lightweight, it seems like an aluminum one. What I have to do now is remove all this very ugly red tape. I put it around very, very strongly because I have to squish as much as possible all the, um, the resin that is in excess. And as, as well, I have to also squish away all the air bubbles that can be formed around the, the natural fibers. So the less air bubble we have, the much stronger the bike frame will be. So let me take a knife, remove all this ugly red tape and see how this came out. 
Wow. Using this plastic tape is a very clever idea because plastic doesn't stick very well to resin but it's also a clever idea if I will start again the project apply some oil around the tape so it's much easier. You can see here I remove all the tape but there's still some residue so I can use a metal brush to remove all the red pigments on top of the resin. Don't be scared if <laughs> right now it looks all scratched up and a little bit opaque. We will. There is a little trick I will show you very soon to bring everything back to life. Now let's take this gold string, apply some epoxy resin on the scratch parts and you can see that everything comes back shiny as new. I'm, I'm taking this gold string because here in Italy there's a very vintage technique where they take dry grass and they twist it around to make furniture. So I want to replicate the same style for my bamboo bike. This hasn't really a, a structure purpose, it's just an aesthetic reason. And I apply another hand of epoxy resin on top of this string so everything is on the same level. So, and the bike frame is ready and it's so lightweight, I can't wait to test it out. I just wrap around this little string, not for a structural purpose, but just for an aesthetic, aesthetic reason. Here in Italy they use Vimini, which is a plant to build stuff, and they close it often with this wrap around. So this reminds me the, the typical method that they use here in Italy. Now what I have to do is mount all the other components, so the seat, the handlebar, the, the front fork, it will be made in metal. But now let's talk about wheels, because wheels are so important. If you think about it here, we don't have brakes on the back. Um, it's also very difficult to install this brake here on the back, there's not, not enough space. So what I, what I bought are these extremely cheap wheels and they are so interesting, they have brakes and gears just inside hubs. I'm, I'm very serious, you can see here we have brake, I don't know how you call it in English, and instead this, that is the back wheel, has three gears inside the hub itself, so, so compact and also have brakes, uh, drum, drum brakes on the side. So I will mount them, mount everything and test the bike. stable and sturdy but there's something wrong with the front fork probably you already understand it I'm talking about the geometry of the fork if you understand how a fork works of the bike is the best thing to do so that we can fix the problem so in this case we have the front fork that is too vertical we something that we already made a couple of years ago and also a couple of months ago we built together a kite buggy and also a bike buggy and both of them have the perfect steering with the perfect geometry so the perfect geometry of a fork you can imagine this way if we continue the, the front fork until we touch the ground in a perfect straight line we can see that the point where we touch the ground is a little bit in front of the point where the rubber itself touched the ground this balance between the two points is the perfect geometry so that we can ride the bike also without hand, hands so to fix this problem i can do two things i can install a very small tire here on the back or instead i think is the best solution to install a much higher fork and a much bigger wheel so a 26 inch wheel now is just a 24 and a much higher fork to do this will solve the problems but until i have all the components let's test it let's test it in this configuration
So this is the bamboo bike and it, it holds my weight without problems. Consider that I'm a very heavy man. I weigh more than 240 pounds and yeah, no cracks, no sound, bad sounds, no squeaking noise. Everything holds up very strongly. I need to fix the geometry of the front fork, but overall I will say that this is a success. Consider that frames of a bike like this can cost extremely expensive, it can be so expensive, more than 500 bucks for just the frame without all the metal components, just the frame. So now you know how to start your little business and make money thanks to all of my tutorial. So you find all the links for all the chemical components, the natural fibers, and as well the bamboo that I select for you. Isn't, not, isn't a standard bamboo, but it's a very strong species. So you find all the links here below. And yeah, if you enjoyed this video, isn't the first time I built bikes. A couple months ago, we made this, that is a swing bike. It's a bike that falls on itself and drifts all the time. It was so fun to ride. And as well, a couple months ago, we built this it is a bike kite buggy and it used the power of the wind and was so fun to use so this is the channel that speaks and talks all about tutorials if you enjoy things and the passion that i put into all my projects yeah consider to subscribe this channel is growing slowly but i need your help to grow up so thank you so much to stay with me until now and see you next week with another do-it-yourself tutorial see you soon ciao, ciao.